So the first question here is, uh, what is the uh, given MD5 hash value of device one laptop? And we go to our handout. And of course, this is the whole scenario for the case. And uh, at the bottom of it, we have two MD5 values for two of the images. So I just simply copy and paste this for now. I like to copy or rather keep my notes uh, somewhere. So this is right now <clears throat> I'm keeping my notes. So um, as long as I'm here, I may as well verify both of these and just make sure that the files that I've downloaded uh, produce the same MD5 hash and uh, we can safely proceed forward with our laboratory. Yeah, so this is a laptop one uh, given hash. I'll just copy and paste right here. Very good. <clears throat> we can even save the changes. Uh, and uh, this is my FTK imager already running. And uh, let me just say file open. Add uh, evidence. Uh, uh, the type, of course, is a uh, image file. And my path is right here. So that should be the right place. And the uh, first that I'd like to open is this laptop. So open this laptop. Of course, it's an image of a drive. It gets loaded and all and uh, we click verify drive image so that's going to take some while uh, sometime because this um uh, the the entire drive is uh, um, quite large so it's like 40 gigabyte size uh, when uncompressed of course the actual uh, drive uh, i mean the actual image file if we look at it Let's take a look at the size of the image file while this is running. You can see it's a 3.5 gigabyte in size on my system right here. So well, um, let's wait till it's done. So the process is complete. And um, you know that uh, you can actually copy directly from this box <clears throat> so it computed all of this and um, uh, computed hash stored uh, verification hash of course this type e01 of the image file um, is um, it does have the structure basically um, what it has is um, it has the structure internally it has the header and it has a sequence of data blocks. It's just internal organization of this type of file. And so it has more blocks over here. And then there is the final block. And there, then there is a tail block. And uh, this stored verification hash is stored at the tail of this file. Okay, so this EO1 file on disk includes all the case information like instructor name, organization, phone number, some notes about the case and everything. So this is the header information. But the detail here, that's where they store the verification hashes. Okay, and so this is what's being shown right here, verification hash. And right now, as we finish this process, it computed this hash and you see how it, how it matches uh, nicely. Of course, FTK Imager allows us to copy hashes directly from here. So let's uh, copy it over to these nodes. And this is MD5. I need to do this again. I press the wrong key. Okay. And you can see that the, it's it's not the same. It doesn't match. Apparently, what's uh, what's on the handout is the um, md5 hash of the entire file of this file not not internally stored hash but the but the hash of the image file eo1 
uh, while we're here I'm going to take also SHA-1 verification okay so this is uh, and I'll make a note of this so this is stored stored MD5 okay and this is stored SHA-1 okay so I can um, it's actually computed uh, yeah so sha1 so it tells me it's computed so let's change that uh, computed it's just nice to take a note of what what ftk image uh, verifies for us so this is fine so i'm going to close this for now so this is not a mismatch because this file or this image file uh, also has its own hash value and apparently this is the one that that, that was given so let's then uh, remove this and instead go to file uh, add evidence item and point it to a contents of a folder and of course this is our folder right here so let's resize this again so let's try contents of this folder where of course the images are say finish and um, so that gets uh, loaded right here and uh, we have our file uh, actually two files that are um, device one and device two this is a media card and this is a laptop that are connected with our laboratory exercises so of course uh, what we can do is just like go to individual files right click and export file hash list so this will compute it for just this one file let's try this we can we can do that export and um, uh, i have this other drive autopsy cases um, okay so i'm just thinking where I would export this I can um, yeah I can export it to the same folder I guess so there is already one uh, hash exported prior or something so I'll just uh, create another file just rename it and this will be in context of lab 30 okay so this is lab 30 so this uh, would be one and of course again it takes a little bit of time to process because it's 3.5 gigabyte in size but it's doing fine uh, this machine is uh, running pretty well and uh, so that's that's the value right there so let's go back to uh, to the same directory and of course this is right now um, the file that I just got created I'll just open it in, in this environment right here so you see that the, the exported hash is exactly what what we what we needed mm, I can open it in the in the spreadsheet application but I don't have to I really have this uh, uh, you see that this is uh, uh, MD5 this is SHA-1 and this is uh, right here these these are the headers uh, for these fields this is and this is my device laptop so these are the things that we need to be able to enter in our laboratory and of course in my notes you can see that this is uh, the actual md5 of the file itself okay so this file uh, it's a binary file <clears throat> it's a forensic image file uh, in case format but it has its own and this obviously matches very nicely so this is file md5 okay so that of obviously very good news because we have some confidence in what has been downloaded and this is SHA-1 so we have this so this is file md5 and these are stored in computer computed from <clears throat> the encapsulated image uh, values of these hashes okay so we have this and now we can switch back to to the lab and say that the ftk imager md5 hash of the file is this 
right so this is this is that and this is this and i think that's what i'm getting here also sector size acquired on what operating system acquired date and image description of course uh, ftk imager has this information if uh, well i need to bring it back as a as a evidence so i'm now go gonna go back and remove this and go back to file add evidence item and bring back the actual image file okay and uh, i think it already knows where i am on the drive so this is the device that i want to open and of course the properties panel right here uh, would should have all this information bytes per sector image type and acquired on on what operating system so you can just so this is really nice um, uh, part of ftk imager of course the properties is very effective and gives you a quick summary about everything so this is good you can copy it from here i hope let's just try it right this 512 i press ctrl c right here and if i go back to the to the handout sector size let's try this yeah you can copy and paste and uh, as you make your progress through the lab just make sure that you save your changes periodically so you, you don't lose anything if in case if you get disconnected or some other technical problem all right so this is the part um, that you can complete now relate to ftk imager so let's see what is uh, what is next uh, we will now begin the analysis of the hard drive that was found on the dog nappers car of course um, i assume that you already read the hand, hands on um, a brief a case brief uh, explanation so you know what's happening here so there's a dog napper case uh, being discussed right here so at this point um, in the scenario uh, we um, uh, we now have access to this uh, image to this laptop and we've taken this image we made all necessary verifications so now we can launch autopsy and start uh, the new case and just before we continue i'd like to tell you that it's very important that you actually close ftk imager i would not recommend to open these image file uh, files uh, at the same time in two different forensic tools these forensic tools have a uh, very strict uh, grip on these files they try to make sure that nothing changes that it can uh, continues to be read only so generally speaking it, it's it, it may not be a good idea to have the same file added simultaneously to two different forensic tools so ftk imager does not have a notion of a project or some kind of configuration um, uh, saving feature so it's just enough to simply close the the <clears throat> the product and uh, continue with autopsy so now i'm going to start autopsy <laughs> 